A curse is a solemn utterance intended to invoke a supernatural power to inflict harm or punishment on someone or something. Many people are superstitious and believe in curses and hexes. I'll be honest, I'm one of those people. I want to share with you two stories that I found related to previous crimes involving a cursed or haunted object. Hello, my name is Janine, and you're watching Now You Know. Our first story takes us to North Yorkshire in the United Kingdom. The year was 1702. There you would have found a small pub that was owned and operated by a man by the name of Thomas Busby. When Thomas wasn't working, you would often find him sleeping in his favorite chair. If he showed up to the pub and found someone in his chair, he would not hesitate to confront the person. Thomas had a mean side. It only took a few of these confrontations for people to understand that no one except for Thomas was to sit in that chair. Now Thomas was not exactly an upstanding citizen. He was known to be a petty thief, and this apparently was something that ran in the family. Thomas had a business partner by the name of Daniel Aldi. He was known to be a coin forger, and he was very successful at his trade. Thomas fell in love and married Daniel's daughter, Elizabeth. Daniel was not happy with this union, and often him and Thomas would fight over the matter. Daniel owned a small farm named Danity Hall. This farm was in a rural area far away from prying eyes. He was able to conduct his counterfeit business in peace there. Things seemed to be going well for the two men, despite the family drama. That was until Daniel and Thomas got into yet another argument over the marriage. A couple days later, Daniel finally decided he had had enough and went to the pub to end things once and for all. Thomas wasn't there, so Daniel took it upon himself to wait in Thomas's chair. When Thomas arrived to find him in the forbidden spot, he ordered Daniel to move. Daniel, of course, refused. He was the elder of the two, and he demanded respect from Thomas. The two got into another scuffle, and Daniel took Elizabeth back to the family farm, forbidding her to see Thomas again. Thomas, in a rage that night, went to Danity Hall to collect his wife, but Daniel stopped him, and they ended up in another physical altercation. Thomas then grabbed the hammer Daniel used for counterfeiting and repeatedly struck him until death ensued. Thomas cleaned up the mess and attempted to hide the body in the woods on the outskirts of the farm. Once the authorities found the body, they were able to prove Thomas to be the murderer. He was tried and sentenced to death by hanging. He was given one final request as to which he chose to have one last drink at the pub in his favorite chair. It was there where he proclaimed, Death shall come swiftly to anybody who dares sit in my chair. They say these were his final words before they dragged him out into the street in front of the pub and followed through with his execution. Now, of course, the pub was full of people at the moment that Thomas uttered his curse, but no one was willing to challenge it. For many years, the chair remained untouched, collecting dust. That was until a chimney sweep came to clear the chimneys of the pub and surrounding homes. It was hard work, and he decided to take a quick break. He made the poor decision of sitting in the forbidden chair. To be honest, there are two versions of the chimney sweep story. One was that he fell through a roof, breaking his neck, and the other was that he found to have hung himself. Whichever way, the result was death, and of course this ensured the curse to be real. News spread far and wide, and many people came to visit the pub just to see the chair. They dared each other to sit in the chair, but no one ever did. That was until World War II. The war brought in new faces. Air Force soldiers from out of town found the history of the chair amusing. Many of them challenged each other to sit in it. The ones who were brave enough to sit in the chair sadly never returned home from their tour of duty. Once, a housekeeper walked by the chair and she tripped, resulting in her falling into it. It was not intentional at all, but within a couple of days, she became sick with fever and died of her illness. In 1967, a pair of pilots from the Royal Air Force took to the chair. It was a memorable time in the pub full of laughs and cheers, until later that evening they lost control of their vehicle and had a head-on collision into a tree, resulting in both of their deaths. The following morning, the landlord of the pub recognized the men 
from the previous evening. He then decided that despite the chair bringing in business, he didn't want to have any more deaths hanging over his head, so he placed the chair in the basement. Years passed without incident, until a bricklayer, who was hired to replace and repair some of the crumbling bricks in the foundation of the pub, took it upon himself to rest in the chair, oblivious of the curse. A few days later, he also fell to his death. Rumors started to spread about the abnormal things that would happen in the pub. Some saw apparitions of Thomas. Others claimed odd, unexplained things would happen, such as taps being turned on at night by themselves. The owner himself was experiencing very bad luck. Finally, in 1976, a vicar of the Church of England claimed the chair to be evil. So the owner of the Busby Stoop Inn donated the chair to the Thirsk Museum, under the agreement that they would keep it in an area where no one would be able to sit in it. It is estimated that there have been over 60 deaths related to Thomas Busby's chair. You can still see the chair to this day hanging in that museum. Would you dare to sit in it? Let me know in the comments below. Before we get into our next story, please do me a favor and hit the like and subscribe buttons. It really does help to motivate me to make more videos for you. Thank you so much. Our next story takes us to St. Francisville, Louisiana. Here we will find the Myrtles Plantation. This is known to be one of the most haunted places in America. In 1808, Clark Woodruff was handed over the operations of the plantation from his mother-in-law, Elizabeth. Clark lived there with his wife, Sarah, and their three children, Cornella, James, and Mary Octavia. There was a young, beautiful slave there named Chloe who worked in the plantation. Clark took his special liking to her. He decided to bring her into the home to cook, clean, and help care for the children. He also intended her to serve him as well, and it wasn't long until an affair started between the two. Eventually, the relationship between Clark and Chloe started to fall apart. Chloe became worried that she would soon lose her more comfortable role in the house and be required to return to the fields. She became paranoid and started to eavesdrop on Clark every chance she got. Unfortunately, he caught her one day with her ear pressed against his office door. As a result, he cut off her ear and set her to work primarily in the kitchen. Chloe became so determined to win back Clark that she devised a plan to lightly poison the children. She used an extract made from boiled oleander leaves. This extract has a chemical compound that is very similar to the heart medication digoxin. This medication is commonly used today to slow down the heart rate to get it back to a normal rhythm. Too much can cause the heart to stop altogether. Chloe hoped to just make the children sick enough so her extra help would be needed to bring them back to health. She mixed the extract into the cake, but unfortunately used too much. This resulted in the death of Sarah and two of the children, James and Cornella, in 1824. Once Chloe realized what she had done, she panicked and ran from the home to her fellow slaves. She admitted to what she had done, hoping to gain their sympathy, but they all turned on her. They didn't want to be accused of assisting in the murders. They themselves hung her on the plantation and then discarded her body into the Mississippi River. Many people who visit the property say they see ghostly apparitions of Sarah and the children in this mirror. Children's handprints appear with no explanation, despite the glass being replaced and consistent cleaning. People claim to have also seen Chloe walking the halls and always wearing a green turban to cover her missing ear. Now that I've explained the legend, let's take a look into the historical facts. One source claims that the parish records report that Sarah had died on July 15, 1823, and her children passed a year later and a month apart from each other. What is odd about this is that if you research the Woodruff family tree, it states that all three died in 1824. It is also speculated that they had died from yellow fever and not poisoning. But a hundred years ago, they didn't exactly have toxicology reports. That didn't start becoming a practice until like the 1960s. What I find very interesting is that the symptoms of yellow fever are similar to the side effects of digoxin. 
Now, I need to point out that there is no record of a slave by the name of Chloe living on the plantation during this time, but I'm not exactly sure those records can be trusted. I speculate that Clark instructed the slaves to dump Chloe in the river, then told everyone his wife and children died of yellow fever to save himself from the backlash of the affair that led to the murders. But all this is really just my speculation. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for joining me today. Until next time, take care, stay safe, and thanks for listening.